you know, it's um, I it's it's like a very large sine wave. It's like up and down, up and down. It's like there are days that are just like, there's no way I can do this anymore. And then other days that are, you know, like right now it's 95 and it's a beautiful day out here. Right. And we're, yeah. So it's, it's fine. Mainly it's just, uh, To, you know, work against, uh, you know, anxiety and depression and, right. um, you know, day to day and, you know, expectations to be super creative and all of that. It's just it, overwhelming. How are you doing? You're you're doing tons of shit. I'm keeping busy. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. I mean, surprising. Exactly. No one keeping busy. But it's it's yeah, I find it interesting that. Like I can't remember who if I heard something or read something, but somebody was talking about the idea of giving yourself permission to not do anything, to not have to yeah. write the great American yeah. novel yeah. or yeah, yeah. make that yeah. concept record or, or whatever. That just by so, yeah. not, you know, just by not going and doing things you do normally, you're actually performing an act of like heroism, heroism and act of love towards your fellow person by not being a dick, basically. Right. Well, I mean, I you know there was another thing that, and you know, this has all been said many times, and everyone's thought it. But you know, there was a initially there's sort of this idea that <clears throat> there was something kind of liberating about the fact that, like, oh wait a minute, it's kind of it was kind of like a rainy day where it's like, oh right. wait a minute, <laughs> it's bringing people down to my level. This is great. Right, right. Like, they're gonna understand <laughs> what it's like to be anxious or to be depressed sure. or to be, you know, um, overwhelmed by things, and it sort of, like, hit everybody. But at this point... Welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a shitty party, right? I right, mean, exactly. So, but, as it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those things where I'm definitely doing a lot, a lot more music, uh, but... Um, for me, because I got sort of out of the loop of the whole um, rec uh, writing, recording, mm -hmm. touring, writing, recording, touring, that it's like I'm I I, I don't even I'm wondering. I want to know what you think. Like, what is even like what is the value of music right now? And okay, when interesting. I say that, okay, yeah, yeah. It it's oh it's everyone's doing something i don't know if we're i don't know if people are actually listening i don't know if people are <laughs> using music to just sort of like as a trading card it's sort of something going back and forth to, to sort of stay engaged you know i i'm i'm uncertain so what, what i would say to that and, and it's interesting that you you hit upon that because the idea that okay everyone's creating cool but is anybody actually listening to the stuff that's being created and yeah. th there's sort of a, um, a back and forth I had, again, I don't remember who, where, where it's almost like, okay, it's like, a, it's like a write file. Like you think of like computer files, there's like read, write, and there's a read yeah. file. Like everything is yeah. like a constant write file yeah. where everyone's just creating things of varying quality levels. Maybe it's the best thing ever. Maybe it's, you know, Certificate of Participation Award. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's just this flood of like stuff. There's just right. stuff everywhere, which is which is something that culturally I think we've done for quite some time, but it's just it's more exaggerated now because people are at loose ends for time, and especially if you're a creative person, it makes sense that you might you know want to create if that's something that you can do, but right. when it comes time to like people playing acoustic guitar at the camera, I've got limited patience, for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I just I, you know. Again, I mean, there is, there is, you know, I've, I've realized that like through the, through the whole thing, through, through this, but even over the, you know, um, you know, I like to, I don't think I'm as good a person as I, as I <laughs> play on TV. You know, I think I okay. have a lot of, you know, I have a lot, no, I mean, I think, I think I'm, you know, I'm okay. I'm, and I'm okay with it. I'm, you know, I'm a. Uh, a bit of a, a blowhard, a bit of a, uh, you know, I, I have my tendency to be sort of jealousy, a little jealous, but then also a little, I, you know, I have these, 
these these tendencies that are there that I'm I'm aware of and that I can go, okay, hey, why are you doing that? You don't want to do that. Do something else. Right. And that right now I'm being bombarded with um, <laughs> all the things that I'm supposed to support, all the things I'm supposed to tune in for, all the things right. that are uh, – it, it's just to me, I want to do that naturally, but I, I, I that there's a competitive thing. I mean this is the first – this is the first – anything i've done really uh, live or anything yeah i mean i thought about doing something but well i appreciate it yeah i don't know <laughs> no i mean well it's you made it as easy as possible I mean, this is great you know i'm i obviously in some great company i saw some of the you know I yeah mean, you had steel full bathtub i mean yeah oh jesus pretty okay you yeah. got you got you know yeah. guy from devo you got like you know yeah, a guy from right. like pig face and pil yeah <laughs> You could yeah. you could do right. worse, <laughs> right. right, right. But then, by the same token, I mean, that's the oh, go ahead, yeah. No, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, but okay. the, my, my I mean, some of my favorite episodes of the show aren't even necessarily. I mean, obviously, I love talking to those people, but I like talking to the people that maybe you don't know, but you should know. And I like like giving that giving that air as well. Yeah, because it's all part of the ecosystem, and that's one of the reasons why. Like, I mean, I. I'm turning this into about me and the show, but I've turned down plenty of guests. And one of the reasons no. why, because I'm like, it's not right for the show. Like, it's not. Yeah. I mean, what I do is because, like, who I invite on, I usually have a deep knowledge, respect, and affinity for. Right. And I don't think it would – it's just a waste of everyone's time if I just have, like, oh, I'm promoting my new record. I'm going to, you know. Well, so – Okay, so, fine. So that's the thing is that – Everything, and this has been for the past however many years, everything has felt like someone's promoting something. Right. And <laughs> I, I have, there's a bucket of that for me I, that I can take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. But I don't want to live my life in that. And what happens is that um, I can, after doing it for however long, you know, you can you can see the cycles. You can see what people are trying to sort of capitalize on. You can see uh, the, I mean, uh, in a petty way, sort of the things that people are trying to bite from each other mm, and sort of right. use to their advantage. And it becomes um, something that. You know, if I don't feel it's like this authentic thing, like this person put this record out or is doing this thing um, because they really believe in it. I mean, I can I believe that that at this point and this might be the blowhard in me, but that I, I can walk and see somebody playing music yeah. and I know right then whether or not this is where it is. Like, is this person <laughs> just starting spectrum. out? Is yeah. This whatever? Like, yeah, I mean, it's like and, and all of it's OK. But it's the same. It's the same thing about the promotion thing, where, um, and again, this is probably goes back to the petty thing, where you know when you've done self promotion, when you've never had a manager or a publicity company mm -hmm. or anything like that, right? Right. You've never had that, and you're just being inundated by a, by an artist that is sort of on your same level or within your peer group on through that machine yeah it becomes you know i almost want to just you know kind of reach out and just say hey just you know ease up you know <laughs> i'm still finding i'm still finding records from you know 78 you know, or 79 that are amazing i'm finding bands from you know, these i've never even heard before and right. their records are amazing and i and I find them because I'm looking. You don't need to put this down my, shove it down my throat. So, and that, you know? and, and what you're, what you're talking about is, is sort of the idea that there's almost like a desperation sometimes to some of it, that it, it comes off as just being like, oh, if this, if people, if I don't find the audience for this right now, it's going to die, which mm -hmm. is assuredly not the case, but mm -hmm. I feel. No, but it's, it's, yeah, it's like, it's, those are the, uh, you know, those are, that's the executive wor world versus the worker world. Right. I mean, it's the same thing. We have to keep going. The show must go on. Well, why? Yeah. Why does it? Why does, what, the show, does the show have to We're go on? We're the putting the show on. <laughs> yeah, there's no exactly. audience. First of all, there's no audience. Everybody's going to die or whatever. But 
it's yeah, it is. It's it it is definitely from a, a place of really questioning, you know, why you're doing it, and you know, if it's ten years between records. Maybe it's 10 years between records. Right. But, I mean, like, this is the kind of thing that I'm thinking about with you is that, you know, you – and tell me, tell, me if this is, tell me if this is at all correct. But, okay. But you are in uh, – you are in a, in a space and in a conversation with people mm -hmm. creatively so consistently that these moments, these authentic moments consistently happen. Right. You you stumble you play with a band that you go oh my god you're one of those bands what are you doing and they go oh we're gonna put a record out and you go great you give you a split single and they go oh my god I can't believe it and yeah that's yeah happens. that's why you're able to keep going and going and going right you know you're not sitting behind a, a table a board table saying okay well we need to do this many releases or whatever I mean, <laughs> right, that's right. sitting the there and like idea. doing the doing the calculus like well if we you know we right. <laughs> move right. this one this position this chess piece goes over right. here yeah right but you're but it's almost like you know you are, are be, because you are so embedded in in uh, a culture of people actively pursuing music for authentic reasons it gives you opportunity to do it again and again totally and that's and that's part of that is how you choose to conduct yourself and part mm -hmm. of that's how you choose to who you choose to surround yourself with and and what manner of interaction that is for me right and again uh with the show i've turned down plenty of stuff and, and, and the reason why it's because it's like that's not what this show is and like the fact and the fact that some of this stuff you know, is the suggestion is like, have you heard this show before? Like, do you know what this is? Do you know what this show is? Because, but then by the same token, you know, it's like, well, that's kind of arrogant too, because people aren't necessarily listening to things with the same level of interest as well. And that's okay. Like, it's okay right. to have someone just like, they're a casual fan. Like they know, oh yeah, you know, you know, with right. Babyland. Oh, that's the band with the grinder and the, and the oil drum. Okay, well, yeah. Right. That, right. Those those right. are true statements, yeah. but there's a, yes. there's a whole lot more to it than yes. just that. All of the above, yes, correct, absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I just um, been having me but but yeah, I I I I realize that you know there's there's a um, that there's been this sort of arc and sort of. Uh, being a, a social being within my life in which, you know, originally all of this, all of my social sort of interactions are ba were, were based on experience, you know, whether it's like, you know, school or pe certain people played sports and, you know, I was into music and so I had right. friends who were into music and then I started bands and everything came from, from um, an effort um, and putting, and physically putting yourself in, at this point, right. at this point, it's it is you're already in there. What do you have to say for yourself? And people yeah. are standing behind. People stand behind things that they I don't think they fully fleshed out or really believe or anything. So it just comes between it. It, it comes down to people just generating, and they're generating, generating, generating because they feel like you know, that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to for you to be in the game social media wise you have to generate yeah and that's uh what you end up is you end up with a lot of stuff that's Pictures just there sandwiches. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> right. Right. like like it's okay so so on that and this is this is a larger discussion mm -hmm. of course but on that i think it's interesting that you know it used to be that there was a time that you weren't expected to have a take on something you know, you could experience something and you wouldn't necessarily have to have, oh, well, here's my take on that, that you articulated and decided to write up. Like, it wasn't that you didn't have feelings about it. It wasn't that you didn't experience that. But the hot take industrial complex, right, is just <laughs> like something where it, it, it's it, it's the, the platforming and over-representation of the individual without supporting the needs of the individual has made people feel lacking if they don't participate in that active conversation right. by putting their opinion out right. there. Right. Right. And also, I mean, I think also you're, you're, you know, you're, you're groomed for it. I mean, you start, yeah. you, you, you can learn it. I mean, you can, you, you sort of know the, the, uh, um, uh, 
the sort of correct side to sit on that fits. And this goes on to actually, this is, uh, this is even, uh, you know, this is one of the things you talk about music on the show, right? Is that one of the things? We do typically <laughs> talk about music so, on this show sometimes. I was so, going to say, maybe it'll even so, happen soon. <laughs> so, so uh, we were, uh, it was like this sort of, uh, combination of the, um, you know, uh, finding the, you know, the, the, the sort of social media thing of which I'm doing now. I never do anything like this, but just doing, you know, what are the 10 albums that influence me? And mm-hmm. sort of sure, yeah, yeah. And then sort of start to talk about it and sort of, you know, uh, there's probably a right way and a wrong way to answer it in the social media world, maybe, or there could be, there would be an angle on it. But in terms of when I'm, I'm looking at these records, I'm thinking about records that influenced me and it's, it is such a patchwork of things that are just how does this go together totally and it it is and it's it becomes something where you know no i had to you know it hit me a certain way and i had to rise to sort of understand it or i had to or it it added something that propelled me on as opposed to i become a fan of something and then I subscribe to the rule book that that band does, and now I know what right. guitar to play, what synth to play, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. To, what to name my songs, what to do this, what label, what I know Here's your box. Well, <laughs> yeah. Here it is, and I've got it, and I'm done. And then you sort of, it kind of paints you in a corner where you go, well, wait a minute, I no longer want to be about that, but I've made my entire existence, um, you know, my I based everything on a rule book for something and not from like authentic choices. You're, 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 you've tied in your identity with the art in an extrapical way that has made you put you in a box ostensibly. Right. Right. And, and if you're lucky, that box sells for a long time. (laughs) And if you're lucky, the people in that box, yeah, you're happy with. Right. You know, you, you, this is this is something that that can sustain you. But invariably, it's like the kind of thing where. I mean, at the very least, you wake up and you go, oh, this box again. I mean, oh, OK, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, this is great. But I mean, I don't you know, I, I want to try something else. And so that what what seems to happen is, is that right now with with music there is such a uh uh we have such access and such an ability to to know everyone's setup know all right. their equipment use the same equipment uh <laughs> in in electro in terms of an electronic stuff that you know yeah. buy their sounds right their right sounds, yeah like literally like oh, they, they, they get they get these they use these keyboards right. they use these patches they <laughs> right 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 or even or even so on the flip side you say well you know uh electronic music wise um you know modular stuff it's like i'm not a modular guy that's fine i I don't have a problem with modular stuff but there is an idea that like like i am i am uh even more authentic if i use something that is obscure well obscure to who well obscure to the people who don't use modular but I guarantee the people who use modular equipment are following the people who are famous and and putting those things together. Totally, right? totally. So, well, I don't know. well, and and then it's 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 you'd like to think of it as being an ecosystem, but there is definitely that mindset of like, aha, if I if I learn these specific incantations and like do these at this time, then I will be able to do sure. the same thing, and that's fine. I mean, I've I'm a big fan of talking about. You, know, you brought up Stipple Bathub earlier. That so much stuff I tried to rip off of Mike Moraski as a guitar yeah. player and just yeah. failed utterly, but came up with my own, with my own cool stuff so, because so here's of it. Here's something. Here's something. Wait, hold on. Ugh. And yeah. you're from this group too. You're in this team too. And yes, so, and then in the tape deck. Right? And Dan Dan Gatto's got a tape deck here, which is an old school yeah. uh, dic- dictation it's a pedal. One, yeah, yeah uh, st- style tape deck. Where you could have the uh, 
the idea being that with with those tapes that you you could play samples off them but you would play samples off them because there was like a pedal that i think it was sort of like you know a secretary like taking notes from her boss or something along those lines i don't want to be sexist but that's what it was yeah yes and you 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 hit a button that's on the floor and it would record or play and 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 in this case what you would do is you get this unique way of sampling that would never quite be the same twice but you get a kind of like a as the tape stopped and started like which is very analog very unique thing specifically to that band that uh like blew my mind when i first heard it because i mean it's mm-hmm. having get into sampling myself i was i was like wow what's what what's happening <laughs> what is that right. and right. it's like oh right. it's this five dollar thing from the thrift store oh okay right. well christ okay right, right. <laughs> well when they when they were using it, it's probably a dollar right right exactly yeah but i mean at this point yeah but also uh you know there there were it's not super common but you use samples in babyland and stuff so like what you were were you who were your influences when you were when you were thinking of incorporating samples as like part of the music well i mean you know i i first i would say that like yeah, I definitely wanted to be all the bands that I loved. And I mm-hmm. definitely sang in front of the mirror. And I definitely fucking was like, yeah, I want to be in Duran Duran and shit. Yeah. When I was like, you know, whatever. I mean, I was I was totally into that. But that's the first step. Then the next step right. was, and I think the thing was, um, was going to see live shows. And the minute that you see live shows, you realize that, the bill of goods you're being sold with the album cover or the poster or whatever is um, most of the time absolutely inaccurate. So, <laughs> right. well, I mean, we're going back. We're going back to a time where unless unless they had a video mm-hmm. or they played them on radio, you couldn't hear something before you bought it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? And, and, and it's, it's hard to describe how much how much different right. that is now. Because right, now it's right. like click so, click. Okay, that sounds like that. Cool. Right, and 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 so um, the the sample stuff I think was. I mean, I think it was the the first real thing that that got me sam- into sampling was this sort of combination of uh, Depeche Mode um, and Art of Noise and it's a realization that as I, as I basically, it's not just the sound, but there's a source to the sound. So in other words, that with, with, um, with Depeche Mode on, on People Are People on, on the uh, Construction Time Again record, it's like those samples were from when they went to Berlin and they took tapes from the, of their own, but they also took tapes from Neubau. Right. So, so some of the percussion sounds are from Neubauten, and then you all of a sudden are like, "Who is this band?" Yeah. And then all of a sudden, wait, what? And then so that splinters out. The same thing with Art of Noise. It's like you know these these drum things, and it's sort of doing this sort of hip hop kind of thing. And then you realize, oh wait, these drums are from the Yes record. What? Right. I, I, like, <laughs> You're right. Like, yeah. 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 Like, wait, total... so, so, really? So, <laughs> yeah. what, so what it does is it sort of gets you saying that it gets you in the mindset of thinking okay so when i do this i'm not doing i'm not necessarily just doing this for the audio element which is totally fine but there's a reference point to it yeah like beastie boys uh like doing that song over uh um when the levee breaks right and it it, Mm -hmm. it honestly i was even a led zeppelin fan it was like years after i was like Oh wait, that's when the levee breaks. <laughs> which just right. goes to show right. you that you right. know I wasn't right. wasn't thinking about it in the same context. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Right. It actually makes me like it right. more. Right. And I think also, uh, really, it was the idea that um, as somebody who like I can't play anything. Like I can I can compose and I can pick up an instrument and make some noise with it. But I'm not a musician. I can't read music or anything. And I think that. For me, um, you know, at the very, very, very beginning, when I was 11 years old and I heard the Human League for the first time, and I heard this music and I really liked and then realized that, 
like as I found out that it was like kind of that it was made by machines and people could program them it's like oh so okay I don't I, I, I can't play I don't have like a ton of friends but I could get a job right. I could get a job washing dishes and I could buy a sequencer yeah. and I could borrow the keyboard from the guy in the prog rock band down the street you know and like hook up that to the keyboard and and make some music and i could record it to my stereo and so it's sort of this patchwork of of enabling uh uh enabling and 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 really providing as uh, uh tools to express creativity and that is that's the biggest thing that is that was the huge thing for me you know. So so walk it all the way back to the very inception of what became Babyland. And uh, I want to yeah. say 89, 90? Is that uh, am I in the neighborhood here? Yeah. So, uh, so Smith and I met in college um, – freshman year at USC in the dorm. We were on the same dorm floor, and we were the only two people who were not USC people, <laughs> in the sense of... <laughs> right, yeah. What you think. I yeah, mean, yeah. We were, I, not, I, we were... Whatever. We were creative individuals. Yeah, and, and you didn't um, necessarily match with the the, av the average campus person. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, I mean, really, I mean, it's the kind of thing where you go in, and the first thing you do when you get to your dorm, dorm room is put up posters of your favorite band. Right. Right. It was like they, th there was overlap there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you know, we we both loved Killing Joke. We both loved like that kind of stuff. So um, we both loved like punk rock music and just weird music in general. And he was in the film program, and I was doing music. He wasn't doing music at all. And so we kind of had this idea that um, you know maybe we should do a. Um, basically do an AV project. So okay. right, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. And he right. would do the visual. Right. That was our idea. Two people, you're the audio, you know, you're the you're the visual. Okay, cool. So we had that idea. And then I had a, uh, a musical cultures class, like that first, you know, musical cultures 104 or whatever, right? Yeah, or sure, whatever. Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you sit in this room, and they and part of the things that you're buying, or part of the the books, the the, the lessons are are these series of tapes, these cassette tapes that we got. So back then it was sort of like music from Bulgaria, music from Africa, whatever, all of that. So we had an assignment to interpret a poem. The poem was called "Oh Make Me a Mask," and it was a poem about. Uh, um, representing your culture or something like that right okay so my my thought was oh the song about it is musical cultures right so i wrote this song which is mask which and is, I the, which is the song mask as, as known for uh, all fans yeah which is the song mask and i recorded it in this uh kid's dorm room in his closet the vocals and he had a 16 track machine that i brought my emacs where is that? I have an Emacs back here, but brought my Emacs in there. Thanks. And anyways, um, the the song is based on samples from those tapes, right, of the different cultures. So, right? so the, the, these so, tapes that you got in the class are, are what you use as, as the basis for, okay, for Max. Gotcha. Correct. And so I had this song, and then how do I deliver it? Well, I thought, well, why don't we make a video for it? Now, right. Smith was in the film thing, and so what we did is – we went to our little local video rental place and we rented um, really bad porn, um, face, <laughs> Faces of Death, um, and then we recorded some stuff off of TV and we just edited, edited it together in the correct spots, you know, a, a music video from found footage, right? Right. So um, I turned it in. And I got called into my um, uh, teacher uh, uh, in his office hours, and he <laughs> gave me a uh, he gave me a D minus on it. Oh wow! And yeah, he said this is I I don't 
I don't know what this is, and you can't just turn in some <laughs> random music. And I said, I said, but but I wrote yeah. that song, and I recorded it, and those samples are from this. Yeah. And my partner gave me this, and he went, what? I said, God, this is, yes, this is all. This did not exist before. Right. This, this was created. This is this was creation. Yes. Yeah, an act of creation. Yes. And he went. From that point on, we kind of thought that that's how our relationship was going to go. That I was going to do music, mm -hmm. and he would do visuals, and I was doing this other. I was doing this other thing that was uh, this thing called bedroom, which was. Um, it was just all it was all bass and uh drum machine so it was like uh, uh very reminiscent of you know the lead style of um you know peter hook and uh, sure from joy division that yeah. kind of thing but then also and then like early like really early cure kind of cocteau twins kind of stuff right so i was doing that and i was wanted him to uh, um for that as well and eventually that was just you know we were like well why would we do that why don't we collaborate a bit more so um yeah and so so one more thing that's actually really important is that that at this time los angeles was going through this um uh in in august of of in august of 89 jabberjaw opened Right. And Jabberjaw was a was a coffee house. That's all it was. It was an art coffee house. And um, Smith and I were super excited about it, and we were really into it. We were the we were the first customers there. We went in. We would always go in and get Lucky Charms and all that kind of stuff. But once they started doing, they were really open to anybody doing anything musical. So that was really our our sort of. Um, push like uh, that idea that oh wait a minute we could possibly do this yeah, you mean, could do a show could, we could do this, yeah, do this yeah. as a show yeah as a performance as a show for, yeah. for just a couple i don't know three songs and everybody be fine with it no pressure and whatever so that's kind of where the live idea came from in yes. terms of saying okay well we want to do this live but what are you going now so what are you going to do when you do something live and that's where all the percussion and stuff kind of came in right and so of course, you, you you for a show, it's always difficult when you like the the fewer people you have doing the show, the harder it is to make it an exciting show. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it it takes a certain type of person, for instance, to, and I'm thinking of like those shows Andrew W K did just as him, which is if you ever see, mm -hmm. it's like it's incredible because he's, <laughs> you know, he's putting his all into it, but it's still it's like one dude. It's like oh yeah, if this if people mm -hmm. hadn't paid to see this, they would think that this is like crazy person basically. Uh, right. Right. So you're trying to do something to okay we we got, we're trying to make this you know an engaging performance this is a live experience this is something that like you're not going to get in any other way I mean did that how early did everything kind of come into play with uh, with the junk percussion was that just always conceived as like okay hit these things and let's so, see what this <laughs> what this well, sounds like <laughs> so so again at the same at the same time the thing that we're the thing that was happening in LA that we were absolutely the, the uh, yeah early like May and June of, of 89 was all the acid house right. and so what you're talking about is um, you know I, it, so I, I in high school, I went to Gilman constantly. I saw bands all the time, but I went to Gilman. That's where I saw Steel Pull Back. To. I mean, there was a night where, you know, it's like, I am I'm I go there, I don't know any of the bands, and it's Steel Pull Back, to Jawbreaker, Green Day, like, right. on, on a, a bill, you know? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Like, you're, <laughs> like, like, oh, my God. <laughs> and here I am going up to them going, hey, where are you guys from? You're really good. And they're just like, oh, thanks, you know. But, but here's the thing, the energy and the community – and yeah. so the whole acid house thing, it was the it was the same thing. It was it felt very um, very punk rock. Mm -hmm. It felt very, um, you know that that this was was outside of uh, of what was known to me, and that yeah. they created an environment that that 
if you weren't in that environment, you wouldn't understand it. So in other words, when you listen to a seven a punk seven inch, a lot of times, if you're not a fan of punk seven a punk, you'd be like, uh, I can't, there's not a lot of bass to that. Doesn't sound very good. Right, or, right, uh, it's yeah. It's just kind of whatever. But when you're in that room down of the song they count it in and everyone knows what's going to come and the whole room moves in a way and that that the words are being being um not just thrown at you but are being sort of celebrated and sucked in by the group by the right, audience right, right. By, as by a communal experience yeah exactly yes. oh and that's what acid house was the idea was with Babyland was oh wait a minute we won't be a punk rock band, right? Live, live. We want to be a punk rock band, but we 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 use electronics, but then we also like noise and 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 uh, I mean, I guess I guess it was called industrial music at the time, but you know, sort of in uh, uh, metallic percussion and things. It's just uh, it seemed like something that we could put together, and and the real. The reason why it happened is that, um, you know, Smith grew up in rural San Diego. And up from North North County, San Diego. And uh, anyways, for short, his grandpa built this property, and so his family lived there and everything. And so they had a barn. They had these old uh, steel drums. They had old things. You know, anything you would think would be in a barn <laughs> From <laughs> right. 1960 to you know whatever, so check they, the inventory of what would be in there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> correct. So, so over the summer, when he went home, he gathered things up, came back, and um, was able to bring some of the pieces back, and that's kind of when we started working on everything. So, um, and the, the the big thing for us is that. Um, you know, every Wednesday and Friday night, we would go to this club called Helter Skelter. And on Wednesday nights, they were dance nights, and they'd play all the industrial stuff. But on Friday nights, they would have all the bands come. And when I say all the bands, I mean all the bands. Literally, in L.A., that was this that was the circuit where everybody, you know, it's like, okay, so it's like Psychic TV and uh, Red Lori, Red Lori, Yellow Lori, and... and uh, uh, a split second, um, Nine Inch Nails, Noi um, you know, every single band that came through on a you know, wax track sort of industrial thing yeah, yeah. Would, would go there. So we created a tape, a tape together, brought it into them, and uh, uh, unfortunately, um, legendary Pink Dots were denied visas. So there was a last-minute show, that opening, they didn't know what to do with. Right. And so they go together with this band called Biohazard, which was not the Biohazard, you know. It turned into uh, another electronic band. Uh, Ethel Me Plow. Yes, the glorious Ethel Me Plow, and, much missed. And we got to open. So we had to figure out something real fast, what we were going to do. <laughs> right. Um, so... <laughs> So Talk about having a deadline, like, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, so you know, there was there was sort of a recording of it that would be terrible, but um, but there was a, uh, you know, there was really a, an immense uh, freedom and enthusiasm, and we were we were embraced by the the people in Ethel Meat Plow and the people who supported them, and that's really was like a huge thing for us, and they were able. To, you know, they kind of got us into um, that scene a bit more. We were already seeing those bands, but that, that was sort of that someone said, you could come to our party too. It was like mind blown, you know, it was great. Yeah, and that's also, you're coming out from a space of not just being like a fellow fan or a member of the community, but also like, oh, no, you get to do your art in front of these people and, you know, have it be like, oh, wow, cool. You were the, yeah, you were the guys doing the thing. Cool. That's awesome. So it's like, it's like with you, it's like with you and with, with Replicator, I don't even remember. Do you remember, what was the first show that we played together? Do you remember? The, I do. I do, because it was, uh, I th ended up throwing the show. It was that 848 Divisadero space in San Francisco, the dance studio that was uh, that was upstairs. 
And that was not our first show together, was it? That was our first show together. I had seen you guys play a bunch. Um, but that was that the, was incredible. Yeah, and <laughs> which for those for those that were not there, this is this is literally like a dance studio, like ballet dancers and things along those lines. And they somehow they somehow let me throw this show where we had like 400 kids all jumping up and down at the same time in the yeah. second floor space. The floor was going to go down. Yeah, it was pretty. It was kind of like, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was fairly early on. I think, I think Replicator had been a band for like uh, two years, maybe at that point. Not really. Hadn't really done that much. But I remember we, we kind of wore these Devo. Uh, kind of beekeeper outfits that lasted all of maybe a song and a half before I was like, nope, this is not going to, this is too sweaty. (laughs) And there's, there's, there's footage from that show in um, our our video for Gary that's on YouTube. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I think like, uh, uh, there is, so there's some live footage from that show. Um, because I've been seeing you, know, you guys play for, like, years at that point. Because that's maybe 2002. And I've been seeing you guys play for, like, uh, like seven years or something at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I thought it was before that. But, yeah, so, so... It's because we did a bunch of stuff together, and that makes it seem like it was earlier, I think. <laughs> yeah, so, well, but, I mean, I think, I think, um, you know, like, I'm... I'm not like I'm not socially. This is just, this is kind of a weird thing because it's sort of you know I saw being playing music even in my room as a you know little kid as being part of being a part of something bigger and right. that when and every step that I took was to be more a part of something to yeah. sort of like well. At the very least, if I wear my Echo and the Bunnyman shirt and I see someone else wearing an Echo and the Bunnyman shirt, chances are we could at least have a conversation. Oh, I was at that concert or I like that record, whatever. So for me, not being socially, um, I don't know, adept or whatever, that was something that I did. And the more I started to do that, that's why Gilman was great. So you yeah. walk in, I don't know the bands, I don't know the people, but all of a sudden I'm moving as a giant mass with these people. The bands are cool, everything's good. I I'm a part of this thing and it's great. You know and it's going to be a good time. House, yeah, and yeah. and you got like yeah. a massive cultural shorthand by right. by knowing that right. you have something in common with all these people that maybe Absolutely. you've never even said two words to. Right, right. And and it really um, I I appreciated that. And I wanted to foster that. I wanted to do that. I thought like it. It feels like it felt to me like if I'm in a band, my job is. To, I want to give another band a chance to play. I want to play with somebody else. Right. I want to like these are kids who've never played a show. Hey, do you want to play a show? Yeah. You know, I I want to embrace. You know, all of the the people with enthusiasm and hope and and desire to do this stuff. I want them to be a part of it because it it fuels it. It adds energy to it. It it, it keeps it going. And, ahead of me, who are doing it for me, yeah. Right, and and that's something that you know I personally found that very inspiring and kind of always looked at Babyland as like a like an older sibling band in that way of sort of like oh okay so that's what you do like if you're in a position that's that what you do. to to help someone that you know you want to try to like elevate okay cool and then you do that because that's just what you do like that's part of yeah that's part yeah. of this world we're in and that's why it's better than yeah. that world out there yeah yeah and it was it was that way um for a little while and then the whole grunge thing happened and bands that like literally played two shows were given you know, um, hundred thousand dollar deals to put out. So, I mean, it became just it was, it was just it was weird. Uh, you know, I mean, I talk about like Jabberjaw. I mean, Jabberjaw was um, again. It was, you know, Smith and I were literally the first people ever to go to that place, and we right. hung out with the, the, the on that night. No one came in. We just hung out with with Gary, and 
Um, and then it be, started to become this thing, and they were super supportive of us. And then we're like, yeah, come and play a show, whatever you want to do. Right. These other great bands came, and it was awesome. And we would practice there and everything. And then it's the kind of thing where, you know, oh, we he used to practice, and he says, oh, yeah, um, uh, Courtney wants to practice now. So Hole's going to practice there now. So you can't <laughs> practice there. And we're like, well, we can practice on Thursday. It's like, no, they don't want anybody else in there. And this is before Hole was, was even, even a big really deal. Cold. Right, we like, right, right, yeah. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> wait, wait. And then it, it, stru- it, it, it it's sort of like that thing where it, it triggers that thing in you where yeah. you go, oh, my – I'm being put in my place. Like yeah. I'm, I'm – I'm, I don't really matter the way that like I – I hoped I would, or I thought our relationship was this one way. And I watched a lot of things kind of go that direction where there were people who were, and it's like, look, you can either go for this thing over here or you can stay with your friends back here, but you can't have both. And 95% of the people said, I'm going with this other thing. Yeah, and because it especially much went nowhere, but yeah. well, sure. But then there was that mindset at that time that like, oh, they're letting the weirdos in. So okay, cool. That this is my this is my chance to you know do something bigger. And like, I get that. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, yeah. I mean, we blew. I mean, you know, I blew a deal. I blew a deal because I didn't even. I mean, I blew a couple deals because I didn't even know I was in it. I didn't even know that's what was happening. <laughs> So it was like, it was like I didn't even understand what was going on, you know, like these label people talking to you and mm-hmm. come out to the house and I want to play some records for you and what do you think about this? And it's like, uh, yeah, that's cool. And then it was like, <laughs> you thought you were just hanging out? What, what, what am I supposed to do? I, <laughs> right. I do, I do too. Right. I mean, and 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 I realized that I just. It's just I didn't have it. I didn't have that thing in me, for better or worse. Right. And so, so what we really got off on was we're gonna do a show. It's gonna be four bands, and, and it's band over in this corner, like from this genre, one band in this yeah. genre, one band in this genre, and we're gonna show you just like I started at the beginning in those top ten influential records. You're gonna go in there and you're <laughs> right. gonna get fucking educated. In the sense that you're going to be like, oh my god, like I like curry, and I like ice cream, and I like you know it's like I yeah like yeah all of this. this is awesome, <laughs> this is great. You know? it's, it's like one of those uh, you know you go to Las Vegas or something and they and they have the, uh, the 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 place where you have all the different types of food and you can get like all the different sure. types of cuisine and things sure. along those lines. Sure, <laughs> right. But I mean, but again, I mean, it's like to be. To be in a in a, a, a room, a live room, and have you know just to be able to experience that—that that is not something that you can um, you, you it it doesn't come across on a, a a live stream, and it doesn't come across. Yeah, uh, it's even hard to do on record. I mean, Babyland never we never were able to do what we did live on record. It never happened. We made. We made a couple good records, but we were never able to do it. And I was always very, very respectful of the fact that, you know, the reason why we had people coming to see it, it was very much like a, a bake sale. They right. were buying the cookies because they really liked the people on stage. The cookies were pretty good. They're okay. <laughs> but, but, but this is a pretty good group to be a part of to be a part of the group yeah and and that I, well yeah i mean i don't know if I, I i see what you're saying about you know feeling that the live show wasn't necessarily captured by the record but i mean the fact is the right. songs were good i mean if the songs weren't good like it, it, it wouldn't have been as important for for folks uh but I, i'm curious as to and i don't know if we've ever talked about this but i'm curious as to with with the first record being created out, out of this art project thing uh, yeah. And then it ends up Flipside ends up doing it. Flipside was yeah. known mostly as a punk rock thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Which which yeah. which when I say that, 
what I'm referring to isn't this the ethos of punk rock or the mindset of punk rock, yeah. but like a defined yeah. defined set of sounds normally. Oh, that's punk rock. Yes, this was so. If you didn't, if you didn't know Flipside and you don't know Flipside, it's going to be really difficult to sort of get it. But it's a moment in time. Yeah, <laughs> it's a moment in time. I mean, it was. was uh, you know, it was essentially, aside from, what was the other one? I mean, essentially one of the first punk zines, yeah. right? It was like Maximum was, Rock and Roll and Flipside. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, okay, so that's that thing where we were fueled by our love of punk rock and of electronic stuff, Acid House, and then also sort of english post-punk bands and english electronic bands so we kind of come out saying okay th this is these are the things that were that were are driving us but the thing that we started from the very beginning was that we would play anyone we right. it will play any <laughs> we will play because we knew that if you got a chance to play there'd be one person there would be like jesus christ what the fuck is this? I yeah, love what's this. happening. I see you yeah. Again or <laughs> right. And it's fun. Yeah. I mean, and again, it's like I get to be a part of the party where I'm not just somebody who has to in the party and be a part of things and learn from these other people. Right. So we played a show um, with this really like bland, uh, at the time, sort of in industrial dance band. And they were like really into they they wanted to be kind of um, kind of a, a Nitsereb kind of a thing or a whatever and and it was fine but they were very um, they were very jockish it was like really like this it was it was a very odd thing because my thought was you're in a if you're in a band you kind of can't be a jock you know what I mean it's kind of right, you're yeah. either a jock or a band <laughs> yeah yeah and, that's not true but. In an ideal maybe world, it would I be, was, maybe, you know, but yeah. Yes, <laughs> from right. from my perspective, so, I felt so, the same way for whatever it's worth. I mean. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. And then and then so we played this show, and um, we broke a bunch of their equipment accidentally. Um, we had some stupid uh, uh, these like two by fours with like these like babies like these dolls taped to it, mm -hmm. and they were like built. They were um, filled with blood and stuff. So when you cut into them, like blood was spray. It was just really dumb. It was stupid. It was. It was. But we were trying to figure out do visually and everything. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're, you're figuring did, out yeah, what what it is as a live act, right? It's it's gonna take a minute to right, get to get right. there. And yeah. And we kind of do it, and people liked it. Maybe we do it again or whatever. But anyways, so we did that, and there was uh, somebody came up to us and said, "Oh my God, Al Flipside was here." And we were like, wait, what? Why would Al Flipside be here? Oh, he's, yeah, he really, he really liked it. He really, he really liked it. And I was like, oh, that's, that's weird. And eventually we got a call to be interviewed for Flipside. And we, through, through conversations, and basically what we find out is that, you know, Al is really, uh, uh, he's, was a super fan of music, but he really started to get into a lot of, like, he was a huge fan of, like, um, Hawkwind and um, a lot of like psychedelic, like uh, well psychedelics and also psychedelic <laughs> rock music. Yeah, but and all aspects of it. Yeah, <laughs> right. But but electronic stuff. Sure. Um, yeah. He really liked, um, like he was into, I guess, Land of Rape and Honey by Ministry Without. Then he was kind of into that a little bit. He was into various things, and he just was like, you know, this is great. I haven't seen anything like this. Do you want to put a record out? Yeah. And we were like, I mean, we were like, well, we're done. We, we can go home. We made it. Here yeah. We are. <laughs> like, we're you looked at that seven, as like the finish line into the beginning seven, line. Yeah. yeah. It. Exactly. <laughs> throw that fucking, throw that like metallic sheet blanket over me and just fucking give me some Gatorade because I'm done. Hang this the mission great. accomplished banner. It's Thank over. You. Yeah. This is exactly. This is amazing. <laughs> We're in the club. It's done. Well, unfortunately, what we that was our first taste of, of oh my God. 
stations in LA. So originally we were very friendly with the, the guys in, um, in slug. Yeah. Who I, did, I literally, and, I just talked did, to David Scott stone yesterday uh, mm-hmm. for the show, which, which, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and so, but yeah, he wasn't in the band till a lot later, I think, but he, yeah, we he, were like, we were, we were, so when they started, they started Magnetone Records, right? And Magnetone was based on uh, uh, Damian Romero and Michael B's show at KXLU Psychotechnics, in which they were early supporters of Babyland. So we did a live show up there, and both those guys are absolutely the coolest the greatest guys in the world but what happens is that when you have a band of i don't know how many people were in slugs six people seven people yeah yeah they all kind of had different views of things the fact that we went and did this record with flipside all of a sudden it was like uh, what uh, uh yeah yeah it's not really that's not what we're into and we were like we were kind of like huh okay so we would still do shows with them and everything, but I think that that it was sort of an education that um, this was a commodity for them. This is something right. that that they felt they didn't want to get the stink of Flipside on their label. They didn't want they. That's not what they were doing. They were trying to do something else, and I and I totally get it. I mean, we were going to do a record. We were going to do a seven inch with Magnetone first. That right. was sort of like, but again, I had, I mean, I might be remembering that totally wrong, but, um, that's fine. I mean, yeah, the, the long, the long and the short of it is you start to, you, it starts to dawn on you that you cannot escape, you know, the social politics of this. Right. And, um, it, it became this thing where, we were leaving this one kind of group, but we were sort of embraced by this other group, which is Flipside. And fortunately for us, you know, the the zine at the time was a was a huge uh, a huge thing nationally. So if Flipside put out a record, people got it. People at least saw it, were aware of it. It was a trusted thing yes. that uh, yeah when when you you it's it, it's again talking about cultural shorthand right it was a cultural shorthand that this is something you should pay attention to and yes. in a way that i don't know if like brooklyn vegan being for yeah. a band like has the same cultural yeah. cachet anymore no. necessarily no yeah no i mean again i mean you're 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 talking about there were just few uh, there were fewer trusted sources within the underground and it, it, they no. were one of them yeah, and and it it was, it was grass fucking roots. So what what happened what happened for us, which was that Flipside had distribution first of all. They had distribution for their zine, and they had distribution for their records. Right. And so this was at a time where a friend of mine said uh, later, um, I, I think maybe a couple years later, he said in the in the early to mid nineties. You could shit in a box, and and that was very true. You could, wait, you, you, you kind of cut out there. You could shit, the, the aphorism oh, is you could shit in a box and what? Could, and and sell five thousand copies. <laughs> right. If, if you had distribution. Right. If you had, and it was it was true because there were enough places that your CD could go to die or your record could go to die, yeah. and uh, people would get a hold of it. Now, right. so so what that meant, which is great, uh, it, it it got covered in flip, which is great. It got distributed, and then that meant that we were able to play shows outside of Los Angeles, and that we were able to go to these pockets of 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 the country where these individual towns sort of. Um, were were based on uh you know based on how how flip side did things based on it, it was it was it was truly diy sort of you know independent stuff but these people were walking the walk i mean they were they were that involved in it and right. um 
And so we would go and we'd play a show. Oh, and there'd be 60 people there who were super into it. And then we'd play another show where there'd be 10 people who were super into it. And then we'd go to a place like Sioux City, Iowa, where we drive up and we go, I wonder what's going on here. Look at all these people. What's going on? And it's like they're all there just to see your show. And right, yeah. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, you know. Yeah. Are you serious? You know, they know every word to every song, and it all started from – CD going into the town or uh, uh, going into Sioux City and then someone making a copy for someone else and somebody else and it just and that's that's how it worked that's that was the old days I guess well right and it's but it was again it was a vote of confidence it was a again a cultural shorthand to be like this is something that like is, is worth your attention and so that's 90 so that's you suck crap is the name of the first record and that's 92 yeah. i think right correct that that, correct. that comes out and, and that, that is uh so it's a the seven inch it's our first seven inch 1991 seven inch uh an ep um reality under smoto and then the rest of the the rest of the track so it's all that stuff combined on the record right so the record is a single an ep and then other ones and it's something scene. where coming out from a listener was sort of like the first thing I thought of is like, oh, this is like big black, but with enraged computers. Like just like, <laughs> like it was it definitely it hit differently. And as much as like, you know, I was obviously I was familiar with like ministry and, and, and other quote unquote industrial mm-hmm. bands, but it hit very differently to me and definitely caught my attention in a different way. And then my friend was like, oh, yeah, they, um, you know, they have skill saws and they use the, they have these like old apple two e's that they run stuff off of and i'm like what this sounds crazy like what what are you talking about and then i just went and saw you guys play and i was like oh man this is i can't even explain like if i try to explain it it sounds terrible but like this is wonderful (laughs) right well that was the thing i mean part of part of for me it was like like i was actually thinking about it when i was um well i mean i anyways i this this idea like i i think like i didn't know if i wanted to be you know, Ian Mackay or Vince Clark from Depeche Mode. Like, but like, you were kind of doing both. Like, you were kind of doing like well, that, your your and, version and, of both, and yeah, like that's what made right, it so cool. Right, it's like, oh no, you right, could be equally right. into Steve Albini, and you could be equally into Ian Curtis, and like there's something here yeah. for you, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think it's just, um, I mean, I can't get past, and this is one of the things that's like, it's even, this is what's difficult for me now being doing music on my own right um you know i feel very very um isolated from community i feel very isolated from other bands i feel very isolated from um really the whole the whole thing the whole thing as i as i knew it and i you know i'm 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 working to try to sort of find my my place again in it um but i you know i realize that i do i i really miss being able to um help other bands and to not help um to 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 have to have other bands be a part of the experience that community I miss being able to do yeah. that i yeah. yeah i i miss being able to which i'm guessing is probably um probably a lot of what you get from doing all this stuff is that it it's not like oh you're doing everybody such a big favor that's not what i'm saying saying (laughs) no 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 but but it's engagement it's engagement with with other people that are like-minded and like you know if you look at at like venn diagrams there's overlaps and it reminds you that you know you're part of a larger ecosystem and that it's more than just you and your head the entire time Definitely. And, and I just, uh, I think that that is how, how people are entering it. Like people are entering music for the most part, at least electronically from the space that I'm actually in right now, which I think is, um, you know, I, I can learn from, but it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a sad thing. Like, like I learned to make music by playing music and playing live and 
having shitty shows and having great shows and having things break and not work and everything. And now it <laughs> right. feels as though before anybody does anything, they have they have it all figured out. They have the right instruments. They have the right. They have yeah. everything correct. <laughs> they bought the. They bought everything right. And it's not even about money. When I say bought, I what I mean is that they acted side of something that is completely authentic to their life to emulate something else that's out there, so that point of 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 literally being able to. Um, uh, copy something and release it based on what is what is what's working out there right now. So there's you don't get to see a lot of the sloppy learnings. Yeah, everything is even if it's good, bad, or indifferent, it's all springing forth fully formed from the head of Zeus. And yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I I don't Zeus. know if that's better necessarily. TM, you yeah, know. Exactly. Well, <laughs> it, but I mean, I think that you know. Uh, other thing is that that I hope that when my feeling is if I make a record, if I make music, I've made that, and now I need yeah. to make the next thing. I need to. So I don't want to repeat myself. I want to expand, right. and I feel like like for me, part of the decision to go from doing continue or doing Babyland and then at, as that ended to doing continues was was it it's a decision it's sort of like um it's not like I've done that now I've got to do something else right and that is a it's a great place to be in some ways but it's also a curse because I you know I could do this other stuff all day long but it it's no longer it doesn't no longer feels authentic to me sort of where i'm at yeah it, it would be it would come from a more cynical place almost because you're like okay you want this thing great let's you know let's straight. hey i still fit in my high school sweater look hey look at me <laughs> right, this is exactly. great i'm no. great look this is awesome my hair is exactly the same. i mean yeah like, totally that's awesome good for you but it's hard. So talk to me, and and I really, I, I really would like to dive a little more into the into the various Babyland records. But I do think it's so interesting <laughs> that post Babyland, uh, into continues. Yeah, it's, it's the the vibe is so much different, and it's not that Babyland didn't have like maudlin moments or like down tempo songs or anything along those lines. But yeah. the the entire vibe is like just statement of intent. Like a, this is a different thing. But by the same token, a lot of it had similar compositional elements to what Babyland was doing, but deployed differently. And it, it, it seemed to me that was definitely an intentional move, uh, to be sure. But how much of it was a, a reaction and how much of it was uh, it, it just a creative force on its own for, for doing continues? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, even to this day, I'm just totally bummed out that Babyland ended. It's like the worst thing in the world. It's one of the worst things that ever happened to me. Um, and, or that ever happened. I say happened to me because it's not like I didn't have a part of it. Uh, but I do feel like, um, you know, I, 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 it's, it's just one of those, it's one of those markers in life. And I think that when I was, when I, came out of it and started to think about doing music, I it was very much um, uh, a combination of really wanting to, to prove to myself that I could still do it, right. but also be able to say, well, what, you know, what, what am I interested in right now? And, and what can I kind of explore? And um, what it was also, it also came from the desire of, I want to make a record that people hear that they like that they don't know anything about they haven't seen a live show they don't yeah. know anything about that it's and a, it was it's a, it's a it blank was a sheet of different. paper almost yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and so so it was very rewarding that there were a lot of people who um, you know the record did really well and people really liked the record 
and um, you know, and and I would say ninety percent of the people who bought the record were not people who would buy a baby land record. Right. So it, it hit with a different um, audience. It was very yeah. yeah. It was it, which was which was great. Um, but I think at this point, um, you know, uh, I mean, if we're really looking at it, it's like that that record was came out in 2010, 12, 2012. When? I guess it I was know. 2012. Yeah, so. you're right. Because yeah, 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 yeah. That's, so that's, that sounds right. That's, yeah. that's, that's that's years ago. Yeah. I mean, we're talking. I mean, that's 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 ancient history. And in the modern music um, world, yeah, especially modern yeah. music world. And and you know, to to be truthful, a lot of people have. Um, sort of caught up uh, that the sort of genre um, that I uh, that continues is or or was at the time is sort of been um, kind of popular. I think probably for the past like five years, pretty pretty hardcore. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it doesn't sound as sort of as fresh as maybe it it did at the time. But I still I still think that like for me it's like. Uh, you know, I and I was thinking about this with the other with other electronic stuff that I like. Is that you know there was a time when a lot of people put out electronic records uh, early '80s and the '80s, and they they used they used electronics in the same way that I'm using them in terms of a tool to express themselves and to write songs. Right, right. That was just those. This is what was available to them. Right? right, like, hey, I'm. It, it it allowed, it enabled people to be creative, and now with the way, especially in the last, like, I think probably three or four years, with the sort of explosion of um, synth manufacturers, uh, um, uh, 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 digital labels, um, um, sort of genre specific, sort of a reviving of. Um, of EBM and, yeah. and synth wave and all these kinds of things, it has become something where people approach it again, like we were talking about. It's like, oh, oh, I want, I'm going to buy the box, and then I'm going to be this thing. <laughs> yeah, th right? this is they the thing that makes it do the thing. Yeah, <laughs> they, don't have, they don't have anything to say, and there's n there's nothing wrong with that. But it's very much like getting on the freeway, and you have a place that you have to go. It's very important because. Right. You have a job, and it's this, and blah blah blah, and there are people on the freeway who are just driving just to drive, and they're clogging it up. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, once again, but it, it, the intent is, uh, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a different, it's a different thing now, you know, well, it's just different. It is, and so, and it's interesting because the continuous stuff definitely seems like it, it uh, especially with the 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 record you're talking about from 2012 it it come it seems to just ha be much more vulnerable and oh absolutely yeah and just very For like sure. open hearted in a way that it's not that babyland wasn't necessarily but it wasn't necessarily the the, the hallmark of it uh and no. there's certainly a world for that and there's certainly like a, an audience for that but it's not the same thing as and, and again we only got to like 92 with babyland i mean to be clear oh yeah you yeah. know 2009 <laughs> i think was the was this yeah. the year you got you guys split up yeah. i mean like that's yeah. pretty good run and yeah. it's it's yeah. there's a lot of records there and there's a lot of live yeah. shows and yeah that's a lot of history and a lot of history when you when you're trying to make something new to have that following around you like a bunch of baby ducks <laughs> maybe all the time you know it's it's yeah. it, it, it's yeah. i imagine it's got to be a little bittersweet uh when you're trying to make something yeah, new yeah i mean yeah i mean uh, you know we're always about uh, i mean even with babyland it's like we're always about trying to make something you know, trying to do something uh, different and something new, and I think that you know, it's just it, it the whole thing. I mean, just to think about, um, so to think about Babyland, the thing that sticks with me is that again and again, I run into people who say, "I 
I met my best friend at your show. Right. <laughs> right, yeah. I I saw your show and I met my drummer and then we started this band, you know. Yeah. Um whatever it is, right? And um it's it's one of these uh um got it. Um it's one of these things where that is the thing that I'm most proud of, and that's the thing that I miss. Because, because again, it, it's community. It's community, yeah. and that's something where the ultimate, ex- the, you know, expression of community is having these lasting, long-term friendships and relationships with people because you have this common right. interest. Right. And the thing is, is that you know, like, I can't get into Gilman again. I can't get into the like. I I can't see. I, I have a. Tr- I, I can't see these people anymore except online. And this is why this kind of thing is really important is that, is that, you know, what you're doing, the way that you're talking about things is like, um, you know, you're talking about it it as one continuum. And that's how I had all always seen it. I'd always seen that. Like to me, I tell people, you know, we had an old baby on an old shirt that said, we will not go away. Yeah. Right. (laughs) I used to have it. Yeah. One of, yeah, that's one of our things. The idea that, like, I couldn't wait for the 50th anniversary of Baby Land. Right. Now, I don't know what it was going to be, but... <laughs> Whatever it was going to be, man, though, we gonna like, it. it's right. going to be awesome, yeah. <laughs> so, to have, so, to have Smith quit the band, you know, um, um, well, two months before our, uh, our 20th anniversary show... Yeah. Is really that's it tough. really like yeah well it's 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 you know I mean it's it's sort of the way it is but uh, it's it's one of these things where then you start to question everything it's like well wait a minute like I thought it was this one way and it's not this one way and so then you go right. how do how do which I, way is it <laughs> which, well which which way is it and which way and 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 what do I want to do about it do I want right. to fight it. Or am I gonna go? And that's kind of part of what continues was that this idea that that uh, regardless of how what the reality was, I I was going to continue to produce music, and that that what that that is, uh, 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 is that's through some kind of like you know a decision and determination, and that. I was able to do it on any terms that I wanted. And one of the things I wanted to do was, believe me, the record I wanted to make initially and the projects I sort of wanted to do was going to be, you know, really aggressive and really sort of angry. But I thought of, you know, to what end? Like, what what does that get me? Right. Where does that, what, I mean, (laughs) let's say I make this horrible, this record that's completely negative, Ugly record, yeah. <laughs> it's number one. It's number one in the world. Yeah. And so you've got thousands of people who are charged up by this. By your bummer vibes, yeah. <laughs> and I just, I don't want to put that in the world anymore. Yeah. You know, I know how that feels, and I don't, I don't, I don't want that. I'm not 15, you know. So, um, yeah. So I need to do something different. That's all. You know. Well, and it, it also seems like, and again, th- there's a through line with all of it because even though Baby Land sort of started off as more of a, you know, kind of a gr- aggressive, propulsive affair, there, there were right. certainly songs that had a pop sensibility and even like, you know, sure. really irresistible hooks. I'm thinking of songs like Past Lives and Gary where it was, it was mm-hmm. like, oh, this – this could be like on like, you know, the radio, and by the radio I mean commercial radio, like not like right. <laughs> college radio. Like they, they were, these were like, if this was a different time, if there was, you know, the right people were yeah. involved and the right, you know, yeah. atmospheric conditions happen, and it it, yeah. it occurred to me that at the time those songs came out, it, it wasn't like those were like wild outliers or anything. It was something yeah. like no, it it all fit very nicely with everything, and much in the same way. As much as continues, you know, wasn't necessarily a complete blank slate. There's a through yeah. line through it that if you you could you could listen to Adore Northern or something along those lines and mm-hmm. fi- and find 
similar themes and, and similar stuff that you drew upon uh, to, for this newer thing. And, right. you know, there's going to be people that aren't necessarily going to be like not against it, but they're not going to be like uh, along for the ride either. And that's OK, because mm -hmm. there's there's new people. Yeah. And there's still people that well, discover right. the old records every year. So that's and right. that's a nice thing. There's nothing right. wrong with that. Right. Well, I mean, and and I think the other thing is, I mean, I just I always think about it like in terms of anybody who does something creatively. I think like, you know, if you're if you're a painter, I mean, how many times do you paint the same subject? Do you paint the same thing? Do you right. study the same thing? And oh, then fruit that again, one, huh? <laughs> that one, yeah, exactly. That one, that one fucking picture of an orange yeah. is the one that you're known for. Yeah, yeah. And you really, know, and it's orange? like, hey, I, hey, I, I paint all fruit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Pretty pineapples too, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> right. And 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 also the idea that you know, I was a maybe, I was only a painter for. You know, I did painting for five or ten years, and I moved on to sculpture. I moved on to this or whatever. It, it is. You know, the idea, the idea that that um, that people need you to be that thing that that uh, that experience that they had with you that they need that constantly shows. You know, says a lot more about them than it does about you know you and i think that i think as people get older w the great thing is that people could go can say oh you remember that crazy time that we did this and this and this and this and that was a time and an experience and i'm glad i had that and i'm glad you were a part of it instead of remember that time we did that thing how come we're not doing that now yeah. how come you didn't do it i need more of that yeah you owe it to me right right you right, right. owe it to me and it's yeah. like well you know what i mean you know it's it's we we hopefully we all change we all evolve and we all sort of uh i don't know you know at least keep doing stuff you know i mean i've been on the verge of not doing stuff for years and I just I realize that it's just you know I, I think we all owe, owe it to ourselves to to keep pursuing and kind of figuring out those things that that maybe feel uncomfortable at times but that 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 points us in a direction you know well certainly and it's it's something where it, it's easy to in this world to not look at things with that long view of history but when you do view it like as a continuum and and you you view things as like a river right like like this mm -hmm. is like a river of, of you know you started mm -hmm. the, the river starts up here in the mountain <laughs> <laughs> and like you know the snow melts and then it goes down over here and it goes down over this way you know there's tributaries and it, and it comes down and goes over here I think it's easier to get a sense of scope and scale that you can still hear some of the same love for the music that inspired you with you know the most recent continues stuff mm -hmm. and it just manifests differently it's coming out in, in mm -hmm. a different way and mm -hmm. It's hard to know anything's going to be perceived mm -hmm. always, but it's something mm -hmm. where I think that there's an authenticity to all of it that it's, you know, that there's always going to be an audience for something that's real. And again, you, yeah. we, we talked quite a bit about, you know, things coming prefabbed, sp sprung forth from the head of Zeus and things along those lines. Yeah. Like if something feels fake, something feels fake. And it's always, right. it's always going to be fake. <laughs> And I guess there's not really a question yeah, there. Yeah, and and I mean, and again, it's like like obviously we're having a I was having a conversation with somebody and we're talking, and uh, you know I said um, Captain Obvious, but it wasn't really Captain Obvious because I said, you know, there's going to be uh, there is there's going to be a ton of great art that comes from what we're going through right now. Yeah, and and the perception that. The, the thing that I caught from them was that they they thought what what I was saying was oh people now have time to do art 
And I'm saying, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, 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 saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying 10 years from now, there's going to be yeah. you know, a, a young person who grew up through this. And they're gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna hit something in them. They're going to combine something and be able to sort of um, ex- express what we're all feeling right now in a way that no one has ever done. And it's one of those things where it's it's not about right now. It's about you know what what it what we turn it into. You know. Um, well, totally. So that was my feeling. No, and that's, I think that you're hitting on something important, too, because it's like, yeah, well, I'm sure there's going to be some, like, concept DPs about, like, oh, it's the pandemic, and, like, you know, and okay, cool, yeah, but that's not that's not the most important yeah. takeaway at all. Like, in right. fact, right. I mean, for me, what, what I've, you know, speaking personally, I've, what I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of this show, and it's not, yeah. this is not a creative sojourn for me. But it's something that I can do that's functional, that provides value towards the ecosystem. Right. And it also, you know, keeps me engaged, keeps me on a schedule. And it, it's something where it makes people feel a little better to, ha- to like, hear these discussions and hear right. people, like, that are in the same situation that a lot of times that they're in. Uh, not just pandemic-wise, right. but creatively. And, and you yeah. know, what, what drives you yeah. and what, what moves you. Yeah. And... Yeah. Speaking personally, I found it very difficult to be creative as far as writing music lately. Yes. And I'm okay Agreed. with that. And it's it's yeah. it's like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, and uh I just I feel so badly for you know, I have a lot of friends who have clubs yeah. and promote shows and have really, you know, depend on their one big hit. They do a festival every year or they do this thing and it's just gone. And, you know, I... GIF of the table getting flipped over, you know, (laughs) the card card table. it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a really hard thing. So that's why sometimes, like, just like what you said, uh, oh, it's difficult for me to write a song. It's sort of like boo-hoo. In a yeah, way, yeah, exactly. Right? No, seriously, because um, it's like, oh yeah, but no one's actively burning my fields right now, so that's cool. No one's yeah, like, you yeah, know, exactly. crawling <laughs> right, in my window. Right. <laughs> right. So how how are how are things in in Milwaukee? Um, well, what I would say is that, I mean, Milwaukee's an urban area, so you, yeah. you, it, it, it's 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 going to follow the model that I think you're seeing across most of the country, which is to say that in the more metropolitan areas, more cosmopolitan areas, people are, are behaving responsibly. You know, they're staying at home if they're out there; they've got masks on, things along those lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's, you know, people that just apparently don't care, or they don't feel that the rules apply to them. They're just going to do whatever they want, and those people are running around too, but they're like a vast minority. Yeah. Um, I mean, being everyone being forced to vote in person was pretty bad. Like, I think at last count, it was something like fifty people got yeah. infected that day, and you know yeah. that keeps yeah. that number keeps rising. So that that's yeah. hard to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, there's yeah. whole states that are having that problem, you know, and and and, right. and it's right. it's it sucks that lack of critical thinking can be an ethos. But right, that's right. where we're at. Well, I mean, yeah. And, and I'm not saying I be think, more panicked. Yeah. I'm really not saying that. And in fact, I, I, I don't like talking about the mechanics of it too much because I feel like you either are like, oh, you're this team or that team. I just feel like, hey, just being a- aggrieved about something isn't an ethos. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, I think trait. it's like, yeah, but it's also, you know, I mean, I think it's it's sort of like, you know, and I don't do this or anything, but uh, it's sort of like a concept of the twelve step thing. The idea that, hey, look, you know, one day, well, let's just do this one day at a time. You know, I don't know. Totally. I don't know what's gonna happen. Right? And nobody does. And, and that's and, the one unifying and, factor. And, and <laughs> so that so that when 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 we're all sitting around and we're all talking about, okay. Yes, I want to go out. Yes, I want to get back to work. Yes, I want to do tour. Yes, I want to do shows. Yes, I want to. 
Agreed. Everybody agree on that? Yes. All right. And then you've got someone who's saying, okay, well, I think we should be able to. And then you say, okay, well, that, that's fine. Here's what we need to do to meet that. Yeah. For them to sort of challenge. Like, oh, well, I don't want to do that. The information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to provide what they want. Right. It's like, no, no, I'm trying to get you what you want. Yeah, you know? we're, we're, like, oh, we're, we all. I want the meal, but I don't want to pay for it. Yeah, I know you think that we don't want the same thing, but we actually want the right. same thing. And what you're actively right. causing harm to that, and, and you don't see the causality of it, and that makes it all the more frustrating. Do you, do you see, uh, um, do you see a high level of anxiety and, and depression in, in your creative friends or in your oh, yeah. personal friends? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and not just. Not even just in my immediate circle, but I mean, yeah. most people I talk to, on on some, you know, either on a on a more pronounced level or on a less pronounced level, but it's it's a thing. It's it's a constant companion with folks right now, and, and if not full on depression, just kind of a resting state of unease and anxiety yeah. that has been described as like a miasma almost, just sort of like it's. Mm -hmm. this, constant kind of low state of, of feeling bad mm -hmm. <laughs> and in first folks yeah. more well, prone I mean, prone and, to darkness you know that can be even more so that, yeah what we're kind of and this is why you see people sort of you know marching on the capitol and all these kinds of things is that you know it just sort of seems that you know a lot of people are unaware of of how of where they sit emotionally and and psychologically most of the time and that you know we all dress ourselves in all of this dif different things to to accommodate um different feelings you know whether it be the work we do or or you know the chemicals we take or the what yeah. you know whatever it is and you know i i i think it's it is extremely terrifying to have to sit with yourself for a lot of people yeah. And and some people who, who deal with this stuff are used to it, but there are a lot of people who haven't been haven't really been forced to sit with something. And I you that's know, really that's really that's coming a, yeah. coming forward now. And yeah, I mean for me, from my day to day, yeah. honestly not that much change other than the fact that oh yeah. I can't go on tour now. Okay, well that sucks, yeah. that's a financial hit because of this and that, but ultimately on a day-to-day -day basis, my life really didn't change. Other than the fact that the only yeah. things that really give my life value and meaning as an external influence are completely off the table yeah. if you're being responsible, where I'm like, okay, so mm -hmm. that sucks. It's space station life. You know, it's basically, I, I think back I think back to when I was younger, it's like, oh, I'm just too broke to go out. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you're right. I can't go eat right. out. I can't go to, like, the bar. I can't go to the show because I just don't have any money. And so I'm just, I'm just going to hang right. out at home. And right, right. it's that like writ large. Yeah. But there are people that, as you said, have never had to do that before or have never had to just be alone with their own thoughts even. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And then. Well, and, th and that's and that's. Yeah. And that's the other thing in terms of, you know, people who do creative things like the people in bands. I mean, you know, I, I can imagine that, you know, I see, you know, you you play a lot of shows. You play with a yeah. lot of bands. You've met a lot of you. You're, yeah. you're a very you're you have a very uh, gregarious uh, 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 live um, pursuit. You are you are not only just just playing the shows, but you're involved with them, and you and you are um, engaged with the people who put the shows on, and the venues, and the bands, and things like that. And I can imagine that. Um, Many of the people uh, involved with all of that have been hit really hard by yeah. by this, and you know that's why. And that's and and circling all the way back. I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying is that you know I don't know. I understand people are generating things, but I don't think this is a time that I don't think people have the ability to really hear anything right now. Mm. And I, like you said, yeah. like the creating thing. I think that's fine. They don't have to. It's okay. Right? It's, and, and, and it's hard to give yourself permission to, like, right. not. Right. But, like, I, I, yeah. I, I didn't want to cut you off, but I think you're really on to something there because this idea is, like, oh, I'm wasting this time. It's like, no, you're actually doing something that's, like, 
beneficial for right. the people around you right. by doing this. Right. And it's okay to right. just catch up on your reading or like watch a show on Netflix or something, you know, like right. Right. for me, you know, I, I usually shift into a, a different type of work, which is just like, you know, the, the admin style work, which is, Hey, we'll, uh, you know, we'll ship out these orders. Uh-huh. I'll like drag this record over the, over the finish line by doing all this like obnoxious stuff that like really I don't, didn't want to do and kept putting off, but that's me. And that's my Good mindset. For yeah. And for yeah. me, yeah, that isn't because like i'm like oh i'm gonna go do these things it's like no that actually makes me feel better because i am shark like in the fact that i have to keep moving and Mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that like i have to force myself to try to be creative and Mm -hmm. the fact that hearing how other people have have dealt with this and are dealing with this is not just therapeutic for me but i think it's therapeutic for the listeners Mm -hmm. as well I would hope so. Anyway, not to like yeah. open up the, the curtain too much, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just think like uh, I actually stumbled upon a uh, um, a Zoom conversation um, between uh, well Vince Clark and Andy Bell of Erasure, and they were just both just talking and playing music and you know going back and forth, and it's just it's the funniest thing. It's like you know these are literally. These people are just sitting at home. Yeah, I haven't been out. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. What do you, I don't know. I'm trying to. I mean, right. It's, it's the same thing. Exactly the same it's the thing. same yeah. thing. It's a, fl- it's a flashpoint. Yeah. It's, it's, right. there's right. so right. few right. times that there's like a unifying thing in culture, right. especially these days where everything's broken up into subsections right. of subsegments of, uh, interesting. of culture. Interesting. Yeah. And this is yeah. like completely unifying that, hey, all of your favorite artists and like, actors and like yeah. whatever they're all yeah. doing exactly yeah. the same crap you are which is say largely so, nothing so that's the question that's the que- question is this is this is this you know uh, uh an, an opportunity for community you know that we hadn't right you know has that happened you know and th- and i actually think that things like what you're what you're doing here um and i think that you know i love seeing that people are live streaming things and whatever and it's great and you know you know, I stumble upon things and it's, it's awesome. You know, if if I want to, if I need it and listen to it, whatever, it's great. I think it's awesome. But, but I do think that like, in terms of a, uh, just a, uh, a a mental health sort of um, uh, communal experience, this, you know, this is, this is way up there with, with anything I've ever experienced. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm wondering, and I think it kind of, I think it kind of, I think it kind of, you know, I think it scares people to, to think that all the, um, everything they've sort of worked, worked to sort of put out in the world and the, the sort of the facade that they have worked hard to create doesn't really have value in these times, you know, yeah. and that's terrifying for some, I guess, you know. Yeah, but it's also, you know, it's something that I've kind of found some solace with is is uh it's a martin atkins thing right he was talking about you know you have to evolve or die right and it's like okay well does it suck yep but that's you know that's bitching about it's not really going to help so what can you do to to find find your value it's like okay that's that 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 really resonates with me yeah and that's uh you know um it's it's just it's interesting for me to see what and and what I what I have what I've actually seen is that that the people who are who I respect creatively for the most part aren't like like you said they're just they're not really doing all that much creatively. Yeah. And I just I you know um, it's okay. You know, now here, yeah. Well, and, <laughs> but here's here's the here's the question. You know, one of the questions would be, m- my God, the period from March until August. Let's just say in August things are kind of starting to get a little bit better for people socially, but that's that is a lifetime for a fourteen-year-old punk band, you know. Oh yeah, I mean? that, that's like, like the inception years. to breakup. That yeah. Was the summer, right. So, <laughs> so what I'm wondering is, you know, what have we, you know, what have we missed? What has that rock? What are yeah. we missing? What 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 band did not? What what thing didn't happen? And 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 is this going to put more value on those things or is it going to 
to send it in a different direction. If he said, if Martin Atkins says evolve or die, is, is there an evolution of, well, wait a minute, maybe maybe that happens a different way? Or is it, will it always happen? Will it always yeah. be 14 year olds and 15 year olds and guitars and, and keyboards doing this cool thing in this one summer and doing this one? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's. Well, and the one unifying factor is that nobody knows. If somebody says that they know, yeah. they, they they clearly don't know what they're talking about. Like, that's yeah. 100% yeah. not true. So, again, I think you have to be okay with not knowing. And yeah. it's <laughs> for a control enthusiast such as myself, that's terrible. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but I'm trying, yeah. you know, and yeah. I'm trying to lead yeah. by example. And, you know, whatever example that might be, which is to say that, Find value in what you can and don't be a dick. And that's yeah. good, good life ethos yeah. anyway. Yeah. Getting yeah. back get, getting back to the overall thing, like with the uh, – yeah. as much that's as – if you don't get me wrong, we, have, we could have like a spinoff show about this, right? No, but, I know, I know. Sorry. But – I haven't talked to anybody. No, no, because it's all very important. <laughs> and like – yeah, like and, – and the thing is there's things that are talked about explicitly and there are things that are talked about implicitly on this show. Sure. And part of it yeah. is because so much of it is is about what drives people, what motivates people. Mm-hmm. When you think back on legacy, think back a legacy for Babyland. What Babyland brought, like you know, played these shows, mm-hmm. put out these records, mm-hmm. built this community, mm-hmm. and uh, had this intrinsic thread for the people that were part of the community that had these deep abiding connections, these friendships. Mm-hmm. It, you mm-hmm. know, people that got married that were you know met at your shows and things along those really? lines yeah there are people like that okay <laughs> how is Lindsay? how is she? she i think she's just good i think she's asleep right now but <laughs> it's a little later here good. right now um okay. and to have that kind of effect macrocosmically but to have uh, like seismic shift style effects to like create those connective threads between folks in, in the and in the world when you were sitting back and making this audiovisual project with, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> this this mm-hmm. tape about the masks and and mm-hmm. putting this mm-hmm. audiovisual project together, mm-hmm. think about that in terms of, of, of being the, uh, the the trilobite coming out of the sea to where you're at now. Uh, mm-hmm. Does it ever dawn on you? just how the interconnected nature of the universe and what the art you have brought forth into the world has actually touched everyone? Uh, so I, probably not the answer you want, but I, I it, you know, you know, I just, when I was doing it, I just wanted to be a part of something. When I started. I just wanted to be a part of something, and that's still now. I just want to be. I just want to be a part of things. And there was, there were key aspects and key experiences I had when, for a moment, I felt like I was a part of things. Right. Um, but part of my nature is I never am a part of things. So that's. A thing that I I deal with, so that when we talk about something as large as how interconnected things are, it's like I, it, I feel like someone. It's sort of like someone wrote me this big check, and I have no place I can cash it. It's sort of like <laughs> I've got every, I've got it right here. Yeah, it yeah. says. <laughs> Look at all the zeros. I, I can't do anything with it. What do I do with it? Yeah. And, is... and then I keep having and, and so so the, the, the little the, the the little comfort I get is a is a person who comes up to behind, behind me and goes, Good God, look at the size of that check. Wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know how much money that is? And I'm going But I I think I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean What is so, money? Yeah. So, right, right, right. So yeah, the difference between me and you is I'm holding a piece of paper. That's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Right. So, so it's it's the, what is the value of it? Well, the value is sort of what I'm I'm I mean I, I know that every time I feel like I I want to stop and every time I get overwhelmed and want to just end and get sort of 
you know, that I'm sort of, you know, bitter about it or bitter about things and whatever. I just, I know that that is, the reason I feel that way is because it's important to do it. And it's, it, it bums me out every time, but it gets to a place where I go, okay, this, this just means that it's important. This just means that, you know, I want to, I, I want people like this in my life, and I want to be like, I want to be that um, in other people's life. I want to, I want to be a part, part of it. And the, the idea of, hey, I just want to be a part of things. Well, the only way you can be included is to, to raise your hand, to step up, and 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 to do it. And that, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I just, I wish, I, I wish for, for Babyland, we were, we were right at the point, we had a lot of great things coming up. We had a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, we had a, a weird new Skitty Puppy tour. We were going to do, um, uh, there, we were going to do this, they were gonna, trying to do this, like, really large tour with, like, VMV Nation and uh, yeah, and like a package kind of deal. Big, yeah, a big giant yeah. thing, and they were kind of trying to do do these things that were once again. It's not my first. It's not like oh, that's what I want to do. I want to be a part of that. But really, what that what it is is that it. I I was so humbled to be included, right, with these uh, and thought of that way, and that it still enabled us to there were a lot of good good things coming for us and and like it it, it's unfortunate that we weren't able to to do those things but i don't know (laughs) it's just it's 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 such a mixed thing and i and i can't imagine you know um it's funny you talk like uh talking to martin atkins and stuff i mean oh i don't know the longest that he was ever in a band um i i well big face has been only kind of, <laughs> right right but, but yeah i know what you mean yeah killing joke again, he wasn't in that long collect- pio it's a collective yeah yeah you know what i'm what i'm saying is you know again, i mean you know for for the obvious comparison is like our band was very much like a marriage because it's two people yeah you know driving in the van doing it i mean we're doing everything it's just the two people that's yeah. it and so you have this sort of this relationship and when that relationships end, the only model you have yeah have for a relationship i mean this is what's great when when martin Atkins says evolve or die well oh the bass player can't do a tour and this is the same thing for you as well Hey, you want to play bass for us? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's oh, an opportunity. A yeah, I know somebody who'd love to do it. Yeah, yeah. And someone's like, really? Yeah. It's sort of like when we we uh, when we broke up, it was like a month later. I went to a show and I saw a bunch of people and I saw um, uh, Christian from um, Four Hundred Blows, Blows yeah. and Rig. I saw him and I was like, yeah, you know, we're gonna do this thing and then we had this tour and everything and he's like oh you were gonna you were you guys were gonna do the big tour with the tour with skinny puppy and i said yeah and he goes well you should ask me i would have drawn for you and i was like no it doesn't work that way and I'm, then i was like wait a minute yeah that doesn't doesn't work that way yeah you know what i mean and that, yeah. no, that was that was that was that was super important yeah and I and I realized that you know what it does work out in some in some worlds it does yeah. you know this isn't about the other right this isn't about you have all the power and I have no power this isn't about any of that this is about this this pursuit and and opportunity and 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 you know opening yourself up yeah and so that's why every time I think like fuck it I want to shut it down I go wait that. Actually, this is <laughs> remain. Yeah, yeah. I, I say remain open until the next. You know what I mean? Like, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. And that's why the whole, you know, this that idea of the one day at a time thing is the idea of like, let's just focus on what's in front of us. It's not going to take anything away from the past, and it's not going to affect anything in the future. 
negatively. It's 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 going to just allow you to make this decision when when you feel as though it's 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 again an authentic thing, a real thing. You have a real connection to it. So. So, and that's the one thing I say, I, I'm going to say to you, compliment you, and that I, I really appreciate your ability to include people in what you do and to, and to act and how you actively appreciate what their roles are in the things that they do and that you you know, the idea that you have different people in your band and you're doing all these things, that is something that I could never, I couldn't, I can't even wrap my head around it. But you do it. And, and it's, it's something that I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm completely envious of. And I think, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a good, it's a, it's a good, it's a good place. We need more people like you doing that kind of thing. So I definitely, definitely appreciate it, you know. Well, thanks, man. It, it, it may not it may not be that specifically, but I learned quite a bit just by watching you. And again, it's 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 all it's all a wheel. It's all a wheel. It's all a circle. Yes. And it's yes. uh, I've, I've never forgotten that. I've never forgotten the lessons I learned from from Babyland and uh, that I continue to learn from you doing your stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I maybe I need to start recording tonight. I don't know. You know, I am recording. I'm doing stuff. I, I I mean, but you don't have to. That's the that's the, that's yeah, the thing about exactly. this. You don't, you don't exactly. have to. Uh, exactly. Dan, exactly. it's it, it's been yes. it's been great having you on the, on the show, man. Thanks so much for doing Thank it. Thank you. Yes, and I've got to go give a bath to a little one. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> All right, brother. Thanks so much. All right. Hey, and say uh, hello to Lindsay, and thank you, everybody. All right. I, I absolutely Thanks, will. All right. Take care. All right. Love you. All right. Bye. Oh, there he goes. Dan Gatto. <sighs> what a cool guy. Love that dude. If you can't, if you can't tell. Oh, I should have played more music, but uh, I didn't. Eh, okay. That's, that's also fine. Uh, it's okay to not play music. It's okay not to be creative. Uh, yeah. This is pretty controversial. Thanks so much for listening to it. I don't have the theme song set up, so. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate Dan Gatto. Go see him. Continues. Continues.bandcamp.com. Oh, sorry. Mattress.bandcamp.com. And uh, unsweetened is the uh, the most recent one. I'll uh, use that to play us out. Play us out. <laughs>